Okay. Class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Today we've got something that we're doing that is going to be taking the least common multiple, or I'm sorry. Factors. Yeah, the least common multiples that we'd already learned about. And we're going to use them to figure out something else. So, today we're going to be talking about something called common denominators. Oh, common denominators. Common denominators. How many of you think you know what common denominators means already? Gray, what do you think is a common denominator? Basically where the denominator stays the same. The denominator stays the same, he says. Okay. All right. That's a really great guess. Zeke. Um, and like multiple different questions. Like we had two different questions for least common multiple and stuff like that. And um, so there's like we take two fractions and we find the well somehow we find like find the how the most common Okay. All right, so Zeke said if we had two different fractions we were comparing, we would see if they had the common. So let's look at this. I've got the fraction one third, and I've got the fraction, nope, that's not what I'm doing. I lied, I'm sorry. I've got the fraction one fifth, and I've got the fraction four fifth. They have a common denominator. It is the same number on bottom. So they share the same denominator. It, they have it in common. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Common denominator is just a fancy way to say that it's the same thing. Um, yeah, Josie. Sorry. Um, can you present? Do what? Present. Can you present? Oh, I didn't present. What kind of terrible teacher am I? Um, okay, my bad, guys. Okay, that better? All right, so one fifth and four fifth have a common denominator. I'm so sorry, virtual friends. Josie, thank you for saying something. Um, okay, now if I had these two fractions, do they have a common denominator? No. No. So, can we make it a common denominator? Yes, you can. Um, all right. So, to find a common denominator, we're basically going to be listing the least common multiples for both of these and seeing what they have in common and going that way about it. Okay? So let me tell you what I mean. We've got one third and one fifth here. I'm going to rewrite those. One third, and then over here I got one fifth. Okay. Oh. I so I'm gonna. This. I'm looking at my denominators. So I'm looking at three, and I'm going to list my multiples for three. Three, three six, six nine, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. I'm going to stop there. I think I can find something. Now I'm going to list down here my fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. Oh, you guys are telling me to stop. Okay, what's my least common multiple? 15. 15. Okay. What do I have to multiply 3 by to get 15? 5. So 3 times 5 is what would give me the 15. Everybody agree? Okay, I'm going to put that in a little parentheses here to remind me. Okay. What do I have to multiply 5 by to get to 15? 3. 3. Okay. It's like the exact opposite. It's like the exact opposite. Um, does anybody notice that the 3 has to multiply by the 5? The 5 has to multiply by the 3. And when I do that, they both turn into 15 on bottom. But here's the deal. I can't just do that without doing something to the numerator. I can't just leave my numerator alone. So what I need to do in this situation, I have to multiply the top of my fraction, my numerator, by the same thing I'm going to multiply my denominator by. So if I need to multiply my 3 times 5, 
I'm also going to multiply my numerator oh, times okay. 5. Okay? Uh, and so when I do that, I get 5 for my numerator and 15 for my denominator. Uh, now I've got to come do the bottom. What am I multiplying in my numerator three. and my denominator by down here? Three. Three. And three on the bottom. So when I multiply now, I'm going to get three for my numerator and 15 for my denominator. Now these two fractions have common denominators. Why would I want to have a common denominator? What would that help me do? Z. Um, because if you're like comparing fractions, you need, it's a lot harder to do it if you have like five fourths and one fifth that, well, like not that, but a different the, denominator. It's okay. a lot easier to compare them with the same one. Okay. So when I had one third and one fifth, if I gave Fiona one third of a pizza and I gave Grayson one fifth of a pizza, that would be fair. Is it hard? Some like would that be hard to know who had the bigger piece? Yeah. Just to think about it. Yeah. What if I said Fiona has one third and Grayson has two fifths? Now do you know who has more? No. no. But if they have the same denominator, and then you could compare, and I say, okay, well, Fiona has three fifteenths and Grayson has six fifteenths. Now do we know? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So when your fractions don't have the same denominator, it's hard for you to compare them. And there are going to be plenty of times you want to compare a fraction. So you have to know how to convert them so that they have the same common it's denominator. Snowy. Okay? It's snowing outside. Okay. Not really. Okay, let's do. Yeah, there's a fork. Let's do some examples. Hang on. Let me figure out which worksheet. You do have a worksheet today. Hang on. But I need to see. It's snowing pretty good. Not even a little. Not really. All right. Well, not, I needed to really see, see what they have. Yeah, okay. All right. So we're going to go through and work through some examples together. Mm. And then I'm going to give you some examples for you to do on your board. Okay. So now I have one fourth and I have two thirds. And I want to give them a common denominator. Can we do this one on our own? So I want to do at least one more all together. Okay. So let's find multiples and figure out what our common denominator should be. Now last time, 12. Did you Sean's just gonna yell out 12. How did you figure out 12? Well, no, four four. Times three is 12 and it's three. No, that's not three. Oh yeah, it's, three. It's, it's he said five. four times three it's is twelve, four. and three times four is twelve. Okay. Now, I noticed last time I basically just multiplied the denominators by the other denominator, right? I multiplied the, what was the five by the three, and then the three by the five. Do you think that's always going to work each time that you can just multiply the two denominators together to get a common denominator? Wow. Yeah. What? So if you're comparing, if you're converting these two fractions, one fourth and two thirds, you can always find a common denominator by just multiplying by the other denominator. So I can look and say, okay, four is the denominator on this one. I'm going to multiply it by the other denominator, which is three. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by three and I'll multiply the top by three. Down here, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take this four and I'm going to multiply it by the other denominator. So three times four times four. When I do that, I'm going to get 12 for each of them. Now I have a three up here and an eight down there. And an eight down here. So two thirds, it turns out, is larger than one fourth. If I wasn't sure if I could do that and just multiply the two denominators by the other one, could I have listed my least common multiples to figure out what my denominator should be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So I could have done this. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Right? I could have done that. And down here I could have done 3, 6, 9, 
12. And then I'm like, oh, yay, 12 should be my denominator. How do I get from 4 to 12? Multiply times 3. And then down here, I would say, how do I get from 3 to 12? Multiply times 4. There you go. So, and if you notice, it's just like it was. The 4 multiplies by the 3, and the 3 multiplies by the 4. You can just... The only problem is, is it doesn't always give you the smallest denominator to do that, but it will still work. All right, let's do another one. If you guys, I'm going to go slowly through it. If you guys want to try and outdo me, go for it. Three eighths and one six. I'm going to go eight, 16. 24, 6, 12. This one could be different. Check this out, guys. Go slow. 6, 12, 18, 24. 24 is the least common multiple that we've got. But do I multiply 8 times 6 to get there? No. you. Have no. Eight. I actually multiply 8 times what, what to get 24? 3. Three. So I'm going to multiply my top times 3 as well. What do I multiply 6 by to get to 24? 4. 4. I got it. Okay. So let me get this out of the way. Okay, this is very simple. Okay, so 1, or sorry, 3 times 3. Yeah. And 8 times 3. Yeah. Down here I've okay. got 1 Ms. times Dad. 4. I'm not looking until I finish it. Yep. 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 Smart. You had it before I did? Good. So did I. Oh, you took it to 48. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But we could have Could you have taken it to 48 and just done? Yeah. Eight times six. And three times six. Nope, that's not three times six. We can do that. This man makes mistakes too. And down here you would have done six times eight and one times eight. Okay. That and those are all what would we call these? Um so I started out with three eighths and then I turned it into nine twenty fourths. Grayson went to 48 and changed his to 1848. They're all technically the same. What is the fancy word we use for that? Good. Equivalent. How can hard to um? Okay, so one sixth is equivalent to four twenty fourths, and that is equivalent to eight forty eight. All the same. Let's do another one. John. Two thirds and one half. Oops. What are you going to multiply by up here and down here? What are we going to multiply? Sophie, what are you going to multiply by? What's our common denominator going to be, you think? I can't see. You can always just look at your two denominators you and multiply them together. So take three, this one, and multiply it by two. And take this one and multiply it by three. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mom, what is this? Yep. Yep, yep. You did something even bigger. Hang on, there's a smaller. Yeah, it's a whole bunch smaller. And big one is also big one. Maybe it's bigger. Hang on. That is not the least common multiple, though. That's why I had to look at it for a second. Yes. All right. Now, least common multiples again. I could go like this, 3, 6, 9, 12. Down here, I'm going to go 2, 4, 6. Boom, got it. I'm trying to get to 6. How do I get to 6 from 3? I multiply by 2. 
two. Times two and times two. I don't know why I have a times in the middle here. And down here to get to six, I'm going to multiply down here times three. Okay. So when I do that, I get four over six and three over six. Those are my equivalent yeah, fractions. Okay. I didn't have space to write here. I don't know what two all right, let's do yeah. another one. I'm just going to give you guys one and see how you do on your own. I've been doing good on my own. All right. Go for it. Here you go. Sean actually won. Good job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But hey, not a contest. I don't care if you're the last one, first one. I'm just surprised because I'm normally the last one. You win if you get the right answer. I'm thinking. Um, anybody virtual got an answer? <laughs> Oh, sorry, Kane. I didn't realize you'd ask a question a second ago. Hang on. What? Why is it not showing me what you guys are saying? Kane, on the worksheet, are you still here? You need to write the whole full fraction, not just the common denominator. You need to. Um, you need to convert the whole fractions into common fractions with common denominators. You need to do exactly what we're doing right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wait, go to least common. Why, why? What are you doing? I don't know. You're not going to the least common one. No. Oh, you think it's over Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, that's good. I always write sideways. That's what I do. Same here. Same here, Will. When I do the vision, I just like grab this. No. Yeah, I'm 20. I'm not going to multiply by 20. I'm going to try 20. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Four because I want twenty to be the That's right. I want that to be right now. So then four times what equals five, not twenty five. And this one's gonna be five by not twenty five. And this one's gonna be five by it's just a little one. I think we need to grab it. Yes, okay. Wait, no. Miss Yeah, Miss Yeah, wait. Yes, Sophie. All right, here in chat. Hello, DJ. What are you talking about, DJ? Um, okay. So, least common denominator. What is the least common denominator for 5 and 4? 20. How does 5 turn into 20? 5 times 4. 5 times 4, and up here I need to multiply times 4. And then the bottom no, the And then this one to get to 20 down here, I need to multiply by five. Why does this work? I'm multiplying both the top and the bottom by five. What does if five over five is what? One whole thing, right? Yeah. So I'm multiplying this number by the number one. When you multiply something by the number one, does it actually change how much you have? No. No. This is why this works and why they're equivalent. It is changing what the number looks like, but it's still the same amount. It's just changing the size piece that I cut it in. So, for example, hang on, let me do. No, I almost hit the wrong thing. Right now I've got on the top 
two fifths and I'm multiplying it. So when I do that, I'm going to get four times two is eight and five times four is 20. The difference is, is at the beginning, I had two fifths and my pie was cut into five pieces and I had two of those five pieces. But now I need to divide that pie into 20 pieces. So if I was going to eat the same amount, I would have to eat eight pieces. They're smaller pieces so I can eat more of them. Okay. At the bottom, I've got three fourths times five fifths. Okay. Three times five, 15 and four times five, 20. So for example, if I had this big box and originally it was three fourths, right? So this is a picture of three fourths. Don't worry about this one. Now I'm going to write the equivalent 15 twentieths. So I would have to divide this box somehow. Into 20, yeah. That should do it, and I've got to color in 15 of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so I'm basically eating about the same amount. I am eating the same amount. My boxes aren't even, so that's why it looks a slightly different, okay? All right. Let me give you one more to do on your own. Oh, let's definitely look at this one. I need them to have a common denominator, but stop. I don't even need to change one of them. Why, why, do I, why am I saying that? I don't even need to change one of these. Which one of these do I not need to change? The one nine. Nine. Why don't I need to do anything to the one nine? Because I can turn the three on the other fraction into a nine, right? How do I get a three to turn into a nine? Times three. Times three. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. But if you take it to a six, seven, nine, and one nine. All right. Doesn't it take it to 27? You could multiply them each by something, but you're going to get a much bigger number. I could take 9 times 3 thirds, and I could do 2 thirds times, I could do that times 9. I could do that, and it would take it to 18, I could do that. But is that the least common multiple? No. 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 So I've got a much bigger fraction. Is it still an equivalent fraction? Yes. Yes. But it's just not the smallest one. Yeah, like, I, like when I was doing a hundred. Like okay. Right. No, no. Um, how are we feeling? Can we do one more? Yeah. We will do one more. Right. Yeah, Josie. Say that again, Josie. They were loud. Again. My internet went out, and I kind of know what we're doing, but I'm kind of lost. Okay. We are trying to change. We are trying to find. Um, we said the reason we're doing this is because. Because, because, because. What am I doing here? Um, we're taking two fractions that have, oh wait, I think we did this one. We're taking two fractions that have different denominators and we want to change them so that they have common denominators, meaning they yeah, have the same. Yeah, I, I saw that, right. but like. Okay, so how we do that is we have to multiply the fractions by something. First, we need to find what the common denominator should be. And to do that, we're going to do the thing we did with the least common factors that we did earlier this week. So I'm going to write the factors for 18. 8, 16, 24. I can stop right there because I'm going to write the factors for 16 and it's 16. Can I make both of these a 16? So ultimately, I want 
my denominator at the end of this to be 16. I can make both of these have 16 as a denominator. To do that, I've got to multiply. Do I have to do anything to the bottom fraction? I don't have to do anything to the bottom fraction. It's already got a 16 as the denominator. But for the top fraction, the 5 eighths, how am I going to get to 16? Josie, how do I turn an 8 into a 16? Don't you just multiply it? Uh -huh. I'm going to multiply it, and I'm going to multiply it by what? What do I multiply to get 8 to turn into a 16? 2. 2. 2. Okay. So I'm going to take this. Now, whatever I multiply the bottom by, I have to do the same thing to the top. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2, but I also have to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. Okay? So when I do that, then 5 times 2 is 10, and 8 times 2 is 16. It makes it a lot easier, and you might have missed this. Um, I asked, why would we want to make fractions have the same denominator? Because if I say, Josie, I'm going to give you 5 eighths. And Cam, I'm going to give you 3 sixteenths. Do you guys know who has more? No. I don't know. I can't picture 5 eighths versus 3 sixteenths in my head. I don't know what size pieces those are because I know that the one that's cut into sixteenths is smaller pieces. But there's only three of them. So I'm guessing that's smaller. But I could be wrong, right? So... When I make them have the same denominator, now I can easily compare these fractions. So when I do this, then I've got 10 sixteenths on the top versus 3 sixteenths on the bottom. Okay? And the reason this works, Josie, because 10 sixteenths, my answer, is an equivalent fraction to 5 eighths. They are the same. same. Okay? If I were to draw out an exactly even shape and cut it into different size pieces... So I could take this box and cut it, I wish I could, into eight even pieces. Apparently, I don't know how to do that. That's four. Um, let's see here. You have to do four and one. No. Seven. That's not right. That's too small. One, two, three, four. No, you have to do set. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Z. All right, so here I go. I've got this divided into 16. And then I'm going to draw the same box. And I've got to get it divided into 8 somehow. How do I divide Four, into 8? Why, why is my brain not working? Seven lines. Seven lines? What are you talking about? Six lines. Yeah. Draw six lines across. This is two, and I want each of these to be in four. Okay, so I have a question though. So, in the worksheet, what, what do we put? Do we put like 10 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths, or do we just put 10 sixteenths because it's bigger? Oops. Hey. Okay. Hang on. Hang on, Josie. I'm trying to make this work. So I started with five eighths. So I could color in five eighths. One, two, three, four, five. Colored in this much of my shape, right? Or ten sixteenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we look closely, I colored in the exact same amount. But I cut it into different size pieces. Five eighths and ten sixteenths is equivalent. What do you do on the worksheet? On your worksheet, you're going to do. Yeah, do we just put like since ten sixteenths is bigger? Do we just put ten sixteenths on there? Mm -hmm. No, we're not comparing them. You're just changing them into okay. common okay. denominator yeah. fractions. So and let's on your worksheet. On your worksheet, let's just look at number one together. Three fifths and four. Sevens, okay, so first we've got to find our least common multiple and it's going to be let's see here 5 10 35. 15 20 I'm probably going to have to go to 35 25 30 35 down here. I'm going to go 7 14 21 
28, 35. It is, it's 35. So then I think to myself, how do I turn five into 35? I'm going to have to multiply the top and the bottom times seven. Okay, I got it. And how do I get my seven to turn into, oops, 35? Um, you have to multiply it by five. Multiply it by five, okay? So this is what you're doing on your worksheet, Josie. Um, so this would be 21 over 35, and then this one would be 20 over 35. So this is what I want to see as your answer on your worksheet. I want to see both of the fractions converted into something that has a common denominator. But I need you to show you. Kane asked, can I just tell you what the common denominator is? No, I want you to change them so that I see both of the entire fractions. Okay, so you just put three fifths equal equal sign like and then, and then 21. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so you would put basically exactly what I have here. Three fifths equals 21 30 fifths and four sevenths equals 20 30 fifths. Okay, you would put exactly that. I notice it's your number here. Okay. Okay, so does everybody understand what you're doing? Yes. Today's just a practice. So do your best. I'm going to be walking around. I'm going to go ahead and turn the recording off for now, though. <laughs> Maybe that will take you